Welcome to the Brand Lab series from AE Marketing Group. This week, AE Marketing Group CEO Brian Walker talks to Raj Karmani, CTO at Farmer's Fridge. So Raj, welcome to the Brand Lab series. Uh, I'm excited to have you on because you are our first CTO. We've had a lot of C-level executives, but we haven't had a chief technology officer on. And we've never had someone with a PhD on either. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, glad to be the first one. Always be a trailblazer somewhere. Yeah. So why don't we talk a little bit? I'm really excited to get into the farmer's fridge. Uh, I love when I have a guest on and I use their product or their service. Uh, I use uh, farmer's fridge often. Uh, I'm a moving target, so I'm not always in Chicago. But if I am and I'm in my office at the Mart, uh, I love the farmer's fridges there, especially the one up on the 13th floor. But uh, we'll talk more about Farmer's Fridge, but why don't we start with a little bit of your background, because besides obviously being a CTO and having a PhD, you're an entrepreneur. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, so Brian, uh, I came to the United States uh, in 2006. Uh, I'm originally from Pakistan and came here to pursue grad uh, school in computer science at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. And uh, during my grad school, uh, uh, I was learning a lot about startups and mobile uh, smartphones had come up, mobile apps were the rage. Uh, and, and I came across this restaurant that would make fresh food every day and had to sell throughout the day and had to throw away some food at the end of the day. And that's when I asked the owner, what does he do with the excess food and why does he throw it away? And he said, despite wanting to donate that extra food to local charities, there was no easy way. And that's when I realized technology has such an important role to play, not just in just software and tech space, but also in solving real uh, 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 social and environmental issues. And that's where I ventured from being a PhD student to becoming an entrepreneur and starting my own company called Zero Percent. Uh, I did finish my PhD in 2013, uh, but generated a lot of interest in 0% from Chicago-based entrepreneurs like Chuck Templeton and Impact Engine. Uh, and in 2013, I moved from Champaign to Chicago to kind of launch 0% in a major city like Chicago. Well, Chicago is uh, a great foodie town and is becoming a great tech town as well, as evidenced by groups like Impact Engine, 1871, and many others. Uh, so now you are at Farmer's Fridge as a CTO. So talk about then how you got from 0% to the Farmer's Fridge. Uh, so uh, it's funny, uh, when in 2013, uh, uh, Farmer's Fridge started in October 2013. So we are just hitting up our five year anniversary very soon next month. Uh, uh, the founder Luke Saunders and I met at an entrepreneurial networking event. Uh, uh, just like in a space like 1871 uh, in 2013. And we were about to start our own companies. We shared our ideas and we liked each other's ideas and thought we could be really great partners. And lo and behold, as soon as Farmers Fridge launched, they became a customer for 0% because 0% was developing a platform, logistics and distribution platform for extra food. And Farmers Fridge put their first uh, uh, fridge out in the downtown and they were donating all the extra food from that through 0%. And that's how our journeys began right here in this town and we became entrepreneurs. Uh, fast forward uh, three years, I realized 0% is making a big social and environmental impact. But without a robust business model, it is just not easy to keep up with the growth and scale and the impact. While Farmer's Fridge was on a tremendous uh, growth journey, making a ton of uh, uh, impact in making fresh and healthy food accessible to different communities. And that's when Luke and I got together and when uh, they needed someone to head their technology to keep up with the growth, to keep up with the uh, needs and the customer experience. Uh, I joined Farmer's Fridge as the head of technology and really saw an opportunity where I could use my background in technology to make an even bigger impact, uh, both in social, environmental, as well as in a technological way. So congratulations on the five-year milestone. So talk about those early periods of time in Farmer's Fridge. That's always an interesting time, I think, in an entrepreneur's journey. 
uh, especially one that's tech driven uh, the way Farmer's Fridge is. Talk a little bit about that and, and some of your memories and experiences with that. So I was watching Farmer's Fridge from the sidelines and I, of course Luke would have much uh, many more stories to tell from the first three or four years of uh, the Farmer's Fridge journey. Uh, but I think there were some key pivotal moments where, uh, where Luke had this idea as a traveling salesman that how could we make fresh and healthy food accessible 24-7 to everyone. While as a traveling salesman, it's very hard to find those options. And your typical options are a McDonald's or a, a, a vending machine. And so he challenged the status quo by trying to package fresh food in a vending machine style fridge and putting it in the center of a food court in downtown Chicago. And that's crazy. So, and uh, for sure, there was a lot of extra food on the first few days and weeks that 0% was collecting from these fridges. And I was kind of watching from side how he is trying to generate demand for this new concept. Imagine in those days, you are someone going into a, a food, uh, food hall or food court in downtown Chicago and say, I will leave all those restaurants and try to get my food from a vending machine. That didn't happen, that doesn't happen, but we changed the status quo. So I think that's the big moment from those early years. And then as entrepreneurs, we would just speak and share ideas, think through different challenges or key decisions about fundraising, about hires, uh, about what is the next big challenge to solve. Uh, uh, for example, one day I told him, you need to put something with eggs in your vending machine. Eggs are getting really popular. People are loving eggs. And two or three months later, there is a new item in the farmer's fridge machines, which has, uh, it was a hash bowl with eggs. So there was a lot of those early conversations that can only happen in a scrappy entrepreneurial setting. Well, as a recovering uh, traveling software salesman, I, I wish that this technology was around uh, many years back because I remember many late nights in some really crappy hotels and not having any options except maybe a bad vending machine. So what I think is really interesting about what you talked about with the machine inside the food court is that moment of truth, right? One of the things that immediately caught my eye when I first saw a farmer's fridge is the elegant design of the fridge itself. Uh, so I mean, that alone is some great marketing, right? It, it is beautifully designed. Uh, but I know there's a lot of technology behind that as well, which we'll get into a little bit more. But talk a little bit about like the initial design. Is, is, are, are the ones that we typically see today very similar to how it would have been back five years ago? Uh, you bet and no, uh, because this is probably the fourth or fifth iteration of that design. I remember the first machine very heavy on reclaimed wood, a lot of greens around it, uh, which caught your eye. Uh, but may not have the same elegance and scalability as the current design. Uh, and uh, if you come to our office, the big uh, uh, warehouse space we have on the west side, uh, we have all those, some uh, replicas or some, uh, uh, almost like souvenirs from those designs in our office laid out on the side. And I would say this is probably the fourth or fifth iteration of those designs. And uh, Luke and team worked really hard to making sure we come up with a design that scales across so many different uh, spaces that we are in. We could be in a college, we could be in a hospital, we could be in an airport, and what truly scales across all those spaces. So talk about some of the technology then that is behind the scenes of the elegant design. So I, I'm fascinated even how they're built. Uh, you know, again, my idea of a vending machine is radically different than what you guys have created and what we see today. So, yeah, I'm curious how the technology there works. Uh, in fact, uh, we truly think of them as so different. Uh, we don't call them vending machines, we call them smart fridges. Um, and the reason being we take a machine that looks like a vending machine, and then we put the elegant design uh, on top. But behind the design, what you do not see is a proprietary IoT technology or Internet of Things technology that uh, our team, the team of engineers, designs in-house the hardware, the software, the networking component of it to make sure it provides a very fluid experience behind that beautiful bright touch screen, but also have, uh, has a secure and constant connectivity with the cloud that powers the 
experience and the smartness behind those fridges and also has those operational controls like inventory and temperature control that makes the experience uh, go 24 7 without any interruption um, so about two years ago i joined pharma switch full-time as the one person tech team full-time and then my first job was to f figure out what all is wrong and what cannot scale and what do we need to do uh, and as I started going deep dive into the hardware, the software, the n uh, network, the mobile apps, the website, I told Lou, we need to hire people. I, uh, this is not a one person tech team. We need to hire. And in the next year and a half, uh, now it, the team has grown from just me alone to 12 people in the technology team, 10 engineers, a uh, couple of folks in the product team, and we're hiring six or eight more in the next three months just to keep up with our demand and growth. Um, so it is truly about not only just providing a fresh and healthy meal that's as accessible as a candy bar, but also deliver a customer experience that's the best in class. When someone walks to the fridge one day, they feel that it's as human as they are interacting with the barista. The fridge knows them and serves them better than your barista today. And that's our North Star in the technology team. Even though we do not have any humans here interacting with the fridge, we want to be at a place where one of our customers or every one of our customer feels that they are, they have a very humane interaction. So a little bit more about that technology and then I want to get into some of the customer experience. So uh, as someone that, that consumes some of your product, obviously I know the fridge is cold. Um, uh, is there a particular temperature that they're all at? Like, how do you look at that? And then I heard the possibility that you might someday also look at some warm features. Uh, or some warm food options, I should say. Uh, that presents a really interesting technology challenge too. So talk a little bit about all that. Certainly, so currently, uh, you guessed it right, our fridges are uh, uh, maintained at a single temperature throughout our network uh, uh, at a refrigerator chilled environment. And all our products can be consumed and enjoyed at that uh, 40 degrees roughly or less temperature. Uh, but we do hear from our customers, especially in a market like Chicago, people do want options that can be heated or ready to heat options, uh, especially in the winter months. Uh, so we are testing uh, as a very agile startup. We are just not testing software or digital products. We are very good at becoming agile at testing food products. So we are internally testing concepts like uh, soups and how do we present them to our customers so that they can be enjoyed at a warm temperature. And you may see a fifth iteration of our fridge design down the road, but we will start testing concepts that are, expand our categories. Um, but in terms of our network control, I think the fridge IoT technology that I refer to uh, has two key overarching goals. One is to provide great operational excellency through inventory control, temperature control, operational and uh, technological uh, 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 systems control. And the second is customer experience. How do we understand our customer? How do we know them better? And what options do we present to them? How is the checkout payment options they presented? How do we uh, uh, enable their rewards and continue the journey when they are not at the fridge? So under those two umbrellas, our engineers continue to look at each feedback that comes in quantitatively or qualitatively from our many different feedback channels and improve our digital experience. And one thing that amazes me that we talk about shipping software or shipping products. At our 200 network fridges, we are able to ship a new version of the software every week over the year remotely. That improves the customer experience either by fixing some bugs, providing new features, or through optimizations. Well, my customer experience has always been great. Uh, as I said, I mean, it's visually a, a, a really well-designed, smart fridge. Uh, the order process is easy. The only complaint I ever have is if something I want is not there, but th that's just because I was too late to the game. That's certainly not on you guys. It is on us. I will interrupt. I mean, at some point, I feel it's on us. And, but thank you for being a fridge fan, and we are looking at many ways to even fix that issue. But along the lines of the customer experience, what I think is also pretty interesting is someone who, who advises a lot of brands on customer experience. You've talked a lot about the technology side, especially through the Internet of Things and some of that, but obviously with the technology comes the data you get. And, and obviously, you, you, as you mentioned, you might get at a micro level to see 
if someone's aligned with a rewards program, what, what Brian might consume versus Raj. But at a minimum, you at least know what's selling in any given smart fridge. Um, and have you noticed any type of uh, consistency across the markets that you're in? Or have sometimes you seen that something is maybe selling better in Chicago than it would be, say, Milwaukee? And do you have sometimes different items in different markets? Great question. Uh, uh, Brian, we have found success in many different uh, verticals, including hospitals, colleges and universities, airports, and commercial buildings. Um, and you're absolutely right, based on the purchase data and the purchase frequency and different day parts, actually, we are able to customize our assortment of what goes into a fridge by item, by location, by day of the week, Monday to Friday, it's a different assortment that goes inside a fridge. Uh, for example, a very great example that we just came across, as a lot of uh, universities uh, started to open up, uh, started to open in uh, after the summer, uh, the sandwich consumption went up. And then we realized it's for the students. Students were consuming sandwiches at a much higher clip than all the other verticals combined, both in the breakfast and in the lunch category, for example. And so in that moment, it was a surprise aha, but then you can explain and say, okay, that makes sense. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, in uh, uh, breakfast category, to me, as someone who, has, uh, who is not native to Chicago, find Chicago as a mostly cold city, not in terms of people, but in terms of temperature, uh, how do people like cold breakfast that we sell by tons in a cold city throughout winter, summer. So that was like for my personal uh, aha moment that we are able to send. But I think it's down to our culinary and operations team to create those amazing recipes that keep bringing people back both for breakfast, lunch, and sometimes dinner. Uh, well, you talked earlier about the potential that you might test some stuff in a future iteration. And as we're moving into the winter and cold season in Chicago, the idea of being able to get some soup in that fridge is, a, is really a compelling idea for sure. Uh, so a couple other things I just wanted to ask you about as it relates to probably a little bit of the technology is also on the supply chain side. Um, in addition to the smart fridge just being very elegant in terms of how it's designed, uh, I almost don't want to eat the salad because it's so beautiful. So the way you seem to have it layered in its individual packaging and Talk a little bit about the supply chain side of the food then and, and how you decide maybe what goes in. And if anyone has actually seen, like I have your salads, all your products, but your salads in particular, I think are just visually so well uh, designed and, and look appetizing and appealing. So I'm just curious how that happens. It's what appears to be so seamless as a customer. I think that's some uh, an incredible example of how technology married with the humanization of our uh, production workforce combines to create a beautiful customer experience. N neither technology or human could create this alone and this pure, perfect augmentation of that. Uh, so a lot of credit for that, of course, goes to our operations team who for day in and day out every day produces those beautiful looking salads and how do they consistently do it just is mind blowing for me. And we want to make more investments in technology on the production floor as we scale uh, to Chicago and other markets beyond. Um, so what we have done is really created a very tight supply chain where every morning uh, when the, our production team starts ramping up to prepare and package our food products for the day, uh, they get an exact uh, forecast of how much to, how much of each product to make. And then uh, uh, they run a very uh, 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 tight floor on, uh, on the day. And by the evening, when the drivers come in, they get an exact assortment of how much product goes into what fridge based on the day, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Monday to Friday. And then as the drivers go out and collect their bags and uh, leave for fridges, they get an uh, uh, operational almost like an operational excellence scorecard for how they're compared uh, based on the routes that they were assigned for the day. So what we call this in uh, a function called ops tech. It's how ops and tech combine together, create a tight supply chain that's solely focused on customer experience metrics, how the product's being received uh, at the fridges as customers come in starting in the morning to have their breakfast and lunch. 
we start getting their qualitative and quantitative feedback. So we know we can tie each customer experience back to a single production item. And that's very powerful. And based on that feedback, so earlier this year, we launched 20 new products and we were able to tweak the recipes almost in real time, just in time is the right word, just in time production and just in time feedback is uh, that this needs a little more adjustment. This recipe needs a little more, the bread needs to be a little softer. The cheese needs to be a little shorter, smaller, something like that. And that was all the qualitative and quantitative feedback that comes in as we sell customers. And I think what technology has enabled here is creating all those communication channels and conversation that customers want to have with us. We have just opened those channels and we tie them back to every person on the production floor and how their efforts are making an impact on how customers are enjoying their food next day. Well, I know we're here in Chicago where your headquarters, but you're growing rapidly and, and putting more installations in places throughout the Midwest. So as that supply chain gets bigger, how do you manage the food production in some other cities outside of, say, Chicago? Um, we have had a lot of uh, interesting and tough discussions on that. Uh, I think we have some great ideas coming up creative. Uh, I believe uh, we can, s uh, uh, we believe we can service Midwest, many markets in Midwest going beyond Chicago from a central facility in the Chicago area. So we are going to make uh, 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 growth investments, uh, of course, in the Chicago area. And of course, we do have ambitions. We cannot achieve our mission of making fresh, healthy food as accessible as a candy bar by just being a Chicago company. So we know this problem of access to fresh food exists in all regions. That's something I personally saw being uh, of the founder of Zero Percent, that how hard it is for someone to access fresh food in many cities and many communities and neighborhoods in a city. And I think we are truly committed to that mission, not just in Chicago and Midwest, but beyond. So I love something that you said a little earlier, which is around how really technology and customer experience and that kind of human centric um, point of contact really all kind of come together. And it's, it's interesting to me. And I think there's also another side to this, and that is almost like employee advocacy or an engagement, if you will, as an employer myself and as someone who works in a very large office building, um, you know, I like to be able to provide perks for our employees, but I also like the fact that they have some options available to them. So I think that it's interesting. We've talked a little bit about universities and hospitals and airports and things, which are fabulous. But then I also love the fact that this is a great option and almost like an employee benefit. Whether or not it's subsidized or not, it's just a great offering. And I have a lot of peers in other parts of the city that say, oh, I love the fact that I have a farmer's fridge in my building. So talk about maybe some of the feedback or, or side that you might hear from employers or how that really can improve the employee productivity. Uh, great point. Um, I'll give you a very specific example. Uh, uh, one of the uh, successful verticals for us or space for us is the hospital systems. And many of our fridge fans work in the third shift there. And it's, it's very hard unless you are going to a vending machine and uh, taking a candy bar. Uh, for them, it's a great... Uh, option to have a healthy, delicious meal throughout the day, no matter what their shift is. Uh, and we try to keep up with the demand by uh, making sure as our reward programs and purchase histories tie to the menu assortment that we are there, the inventory is available. Uh, our customers can now on the mobile app check uh, the inventory of any fridge in real time before they walk up to the fridge. And in many cases, they can also order ahead. So they are guaranteed that service and not be disappointed once they add the fridge. So I think it's really for me and for my team is, uh, and for Farmers Fridge is to be very close to our customers and understand where each customer may be, what needs state and what occasion they may be in and what are they uh, expecting Farmers Fridge to do for them. And being provide that individual, that unique experience and that unique product and that joy and delight in their uh, day part. Building off the um, employee engagement and advocacy, as well as the customer experience and supply chain that we've talked a lot about, which are really core elements of what I would consider in a brand. I think if you can get some of those infrastructure layers right, I think the marketing side of it is a little easier. You know, like we've talked about, people want to be able to enjoy a good, fresh, healthy 
uh, food item. You know, they want to be able to have a seamless experience when it comes to ordering and using the smart fridge. Uh, but if we talk a little bit about the marketing side of the brand, and I know you're the CTO, but what are some of the things that, that you've seen maybe that has been successful in terms of how you've marketed to new audiences or maybe some of the things that might be on the horizon um, uh, to those that maybe aren't as familiar with the brand? That's a great question. And I think one advantage as a mission-driven brand, uh, uh, which is on a mission to make fresh and healthy food accessible, is finding a lot of like-minded influencers that are that may be on Instagram or Facebook or uh, um, uh, Twitter who have really partnered with us and amplified our message and and made sure it reached many more people than we would have been able to do it by ourselves. And, and I think we are very thankful to our team and for those influencers. Uh, and secondly, recently, I think uh, great relationships have been built with media and press locally to get our story out. There is an incredible story of how Luke turned a problem that he faced himself into a, a crazy opportunity in the middle of a food court in Chicago to building a team of 100, uh, uh, 130 employees now in Chicago that has national and international ambitions. I think that's a great story that our team is now just starting to get out. Uh, but v as you mentioned, there is a demand for fresh and healthy product. And if you provide that incredible experience and uh, through a combination of technology and operations, I think it could be a game changer. So as we start to wind down, uh, I just want to ask you kind of a couple more rapid fire style questions, uh, just so that our audience can learn a little bit more about you and, and Farmer's Fridge. Uh, first of all, a lot of people on our team are curious, like what's the top seller at the Farmer's Fridge? We have an inside bet, but we're curious to know what it might be. So in the breakfast category, it's the Greek yogurt. Uh, and in the lunch category, it's the North Napa salad. How about the snack? Uh, in the snacks, uh, I think the dark chocolate trail mix has been a, a all-time winner. Uh, but the chips and guac has been giving some tough competition. Uh, well, I can attest to our team uh, really consuming a lot of the dark chocolate almonds, for sure. Uh, and then what's Raj's favorite in the smart fridge? Uh, North Napa salad is an all-time favorite recently Southwest Quinoa Bowl. And how about something that you thought maybe would be a big hit that just wasn't? Some of the earlier egg options we had uh, played with uh, huevos rancheros or hash brown with the eggs. Uh, and I'm sure with the new culinary uh, innovation and uh, inspiration, we may be able to bring back some of those items. And I'm looking forward to the soups as well. I think the winter is coming and I'm, <laughs> I will enjoy a hearty, warm soup. So besides reading about all your great press that you've been getting lately, how can people learn more about Farmer's Fridge uh, and, and identify maybe where they get, can access one of your smart fridges? Um, so farmersfridge.com uh, or just Google Farmer's Fridge and we have a great map of all our locations, uh, including the city of Chicago, suburbs, as well as Milwaukee. Uh, on a uh, uh, Google, uh, big Google map uh, page uh, on our website. Uh, and they can search by address or search by the city and find the nearest farmer's fridge location. And we continue to expand. We are placing more and more fridges every week and every month. Uh, and uh, that journey and that story will continue next year as well. Well, Raj, I appreciate you spending some time with us in the Brand Lab today. Uh, it's a remarkable story, uh, solving a great problem uh, and providing a great benefit to many, many consumers, myself included. Uh, fascinating to learn a little bit more about some of the technology behind that great customer experience. So I appreciate you being on with us today. Thank you, Brian, for having us. Uh, and I'm proud uh, and honored to serve all our customers in Chicago. Uh, and my personal philosophy of how technology enables efficiency, scalability, and magical experiences, and how all three of them enable access. And I think that's my personal philosophy that's driving me here. Thank you for joining us in the Brand Lab today. We invite you to join us again as we continue our journey alongside today's most innovative and insightful brands. Until next time.